Welcome along to a special edition of Ask GC Anything, joined by two current pros here at the Dubai Tour. Uh, to my left, Adam Blythe, who you will know is the current British road race champion. Uh, 28 years of age, already in his eighth year as a professional rider, and this year riding for the Aqua Blue Sport team. And to my right, Ian Boswell, who's been a pro since 2013, uh, with Team Sky since then, and comes from Oregon. Uh, loads of you have been sending questions in, and we'll start off with one from Davida Ferreira, for Ian. Uh, all pros train really hard today, so what is the difference for Chris Froome? Is it genetic or does he in fact work harder than everyone else? Uh, I think a lot of it is genetical. Like I just, I don't think I could ride to the level he rides at, but I also think it's his genetics put together with his with his work. I mean his like work ethic and just his commitment to train like every day is really impressive. Because you've been to train with him in South Africa, haven't you before? Yeah, last year I did a three week camp in South Africa, just him and I, and I followed him. I mean, we trained together, but I followed him for three weeks I wasn't really I don't know pushing him at any point during the training okay uh, a question in for Adam from Bjorn Simmons how do you get your body to ride in such an extreme position I really envy that slam setup uh, we put a picture up of Adam's bike yesterday on Facebook if you want to have a look at it saddle slammed right back stem slammed right down I think it's a 14 centimeter stem as well yeah um, I don't know really I've always rode like that I've always rode super low on the front but yeah it's just don't really train my body to do it, I just get on with it and yeah, it's comfortable. Have you had that position for a long time? Long time, yeah. I've slowly gone lower in the last like two years, but yeah, it's good. I like it, I'm comfortable on it. I think it helps when you started cycling at a very young age, but if you do want to get into a more aero and slammed position, you might just need to get more flexible. And coming up next is our video on yoga for cyclists. Come to a seated cross leg position. Let's begin with our pranayama, our ujjayi breathing. This is known as the victorious breath to really help warm up the inside of the body. Place your hands onto your rib cage. When you inhale, you want to expand your ribs as wide as possible. When you exhale, you knit the ribs together. Taking a big breath in through the mouth. Expand the ribs. As you exhale, breathe through the mouth. Uh, the next question comes in from Doug MCK. What's the best upgrade you think in things like wheels, electronic gears, or a power meter, for example? Um, I'd say gears since I started. Electronic gears, I think that's the most impressive upgrade. I think this is probably the next big thing, but yeah, electric. And what would you say? Uh, I'd say wheels have been the biggest upgrade. I mean, when I started off, it was like, you know, slow wheels, and yeah, now we have carbon wheels all the time and I think that makes a big, the biggest difference. And you've got the new Shimano ones this year, haven't you? Uh, I rode them at team camp. I'm still on the la wheels from last year here, but uh, we'll have those before the, before the spring. Yeah, they look super cool, actually, the new Durace wheels. Uh, Adam, can I have the details for the genius that makes your shoes? Uh, that comes in from Dominic Brown. He did tell us the other day, but I'm sure he won't mind sharing that again. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you who he is. It's a secret, but um, no, it's just a guy that makes the football shoes for Nike, basically. So all the football players who have personal shoes, just yeah, it's just that guy that makes it with a um, with a carbon sole on it. How many do you get a year? About four a year. Have you got a special way of setting up the cleats? Because it can be sometimes hard to get them in the same position. No, it's always the same soles, so it's just literally like carbon copy straight onto the other shoe. Cool. Uh, we'll be seeing more of Adam's shoes this year, as he is, of course, the head of fashion now at GCN. Uh, from Adam Sims, question for you both. Do you ever ride without a bike computer? Uh, yes, but not really. I don't really train without a bike computer. Sometimes I'll ride without it, but, I mean, being at Team Sky, they're kind of, uh, yeah, dependent on our power meter, so. Never put it in your pocket and not look at it? Uh, if, I, if I put it in my pocket, I'll just might as well put it on the stem, so I can look at it. Adam? Yeah, I, I turn mine upside down, so I just flip it on train. I hate looking at it, it's awful. I just enjoy it. I don't, I'm not like you, I don't do all that sky stuff. <laughs> but now I flip mine upside down so I can't see it and just go and feel more than anything. And then sometimes just turn it over, just to see how terribly I'm going. Yeah. Get a bit, bit depressing in the middle of the ride and switch, switch it back over the other way. Uh, next in from Javi Ragon, uh, what would you like to do after you've been a pro cyclist? Um, I have something relaxing. like being a farmer or something like that. Uh, very different. Not relaxing that, mate. That's going to be hard work. Um, mate, I'd like to like taste food. Do you know, like those Michelin star people just go and taste the food? I think that'd be a great job. Just go around restaurants, tell them how good it is or bad it is. and yeah. You could do some vlogs. I don't think I could, mate. I think I'd be terrible at vlogging. Terrible. 
Uh, for all the farmers out there, Ian doesn't think your job is easy at all. He was just couldn't think of anything else in the uh, heat at the moment. Uh, next up, we have got a question in from Marky Mint. Could they tell us if they've got any pre-race rituals? No, nope. not one single ritual. Just to get on with riding your bike. I think it's too different every time you get on the bike, isn't it? It's not. It's always a different time, always a different situation. So no. no. Just make sure the shoes and kit are clean. Exactly. Shoes are clean. Glasses are clean. That's all. Any from you, Ian? Uh, the only thing I've noticed that I do, but I can't do here in Dubai because we don't have the team bus, is I strap my backpack into my seat so no one sits in my seat while I'm gone. That's an interesting one. We've never heard that before. <laughs> uh, actually, we did ask a load of pros almost four years ago at the World Tour in 2013 if they had any pre-race superstitions. You can find that video right now. Do you have a pre-race superstition? No, not at all. You heard it here, folks. Plain and simple. That's the way it rolls. Exactly. I think every day is so different. There's so many small details that can change your whole day so there's no point sticking with one well actually it's a story from a long time ago and when, when i came back from school suddenly my my front wheel uh, rolled out so now i always feel uh, just before the start if it's really close to really good next up from carlo who's got the best riding style in the pro peloton um i've always liked pataki he's not riding anymore but i thought he was like ultimate dead smooth dead low on the front high saddle yeah even when he was sprinting yeah, even when I was spinning him, or I'd say Brad probably, like my era, probably Brad, yeah. yeah. What about you, Ian? Yeah, Brad, or maybe there's uh, an Italian, I think he's on Quick Step now, Eros Capecchi. He okay. also looks really good on the bike, and he has a cool name. Yeah. Um, next up from Seth Williams. What's been the hardest race of your career so far? Probably wanted to forget it already, but uh, maybe you can remember something. Yeah, De Pana, when I was a Neo Pro, I got in a break and I was with Gilbert, who was a teammate at the time. And as I got in the break, I was suffering, so I was just trying to miss turns. And we went through the feed, and he went full gas through the feed as I had my feed bag on. So I spent 3K chasing the break. And yeah, it was just a horrible day, minus two. I had to put hot tea into my gloves to get my hand in my gloves. It was, yeah, dreadful. God. Uh, you in? Uh, probably my first year as a pro at Perry Nice. And really the whole race, like every day, I was just on my hands and knees. And Richie was in the leader's jersey, so I was trying to do what I could. But yeah, it was by far the, the worst race I've ever done. Yeah, I only did Paris Nice once, I think. But yeah, I've tried to erase that from my memories because I really suffered. Um, what's the one thing that you always travel from home with when you're at races from Doogie 12R? Uh, last year before the Giro, I bought a little electronic Bialetti coffee maker. And I've been traveling with that, so like, I can just wake up, plug it in, make a coffee before I have to go to breakfast or anything, read the news, check my emails, and then uh, it's like I'm at home pretty much. Cool. Massive co coffee culture, of course, in cycling. How about you, Adam? Um, just the usual stuff, really. Nothing special. Just same old, same old stuff. Shoes, helmet, that kind of jazz. But yeah, nothing special. Uh, well, we actually had a delve through Ian's suitcase at the Welter a couple of years ago, so you can see everything that he takes on a Grand Tour in this next video. So, Ian, this is your first ever Grand Tour. I'm intrigued, and so so are the fans. So take a look inside. But what what a Grand Tour rider gets? Summer gloves. So there's like track mitts and track full mitts. Length gloves yeah, as well. full length gloves. Okay. Time trial gloves. All that kind of uh, all that kind of oh, stuff. So and you can tell a lot of them are quite new. Yeah, they're so still been, stuff, aren't they? And like my mom even drew look a picture. Look at the artwork. Yeah, just have a look at that. That's, yeah. The attention to detail with planning is. Well, she's been obviously speaking to Dave B, isn't she, about this? Yeah, my mum's been on been to on Dave B. We, yeah, we talked about making these for the whole team. Uh, almost coming to a close now, unfortunately. We've got to let these guys get to dinner. They've had a particularly tough stage in Dubai. Uh, Jordan Anton, though, says, does anyone ever put hot or warm drinks in their bottles on cold winter rides? Uh, no, generally not, no. Just always normal cold water, a bit of protein maybe, and that's it. Ian? Yeah, we... Uh course being sky we have like a thermal bottle and uh, so especially at races like in cold races um, we have a thermal bottle and they'll put like hot tea in it with some yeah some sort of sugar like agave or whatnot and lemon tea for coffee to warm up can't you yeah that's the best bit right. best bit of the ride uh, I, I once had a teammate who should remain nameless who was so cold at the top of a mountain that when he got handed up hot tea, he poured it over his head to warm himself up. Uh, the descent ensued and he was very cold very quickly after that. Uh, finally, Yasin Greg, what actually got you guys into cycling and when was the moment you realised it was a passion that you'd like to pursue? Um, I was five. I, I met Swifty when I was five, so I met Ben Swift at like a little park thing. I just started messing around with him there and the first time that I met him was there he took me on a BMX track 
sent me down this big hill, no idea it was at the bottom of it, and it was just like a gravel pit. So I went over this big jump, which just ended up in gravel, crashed. So yeah, it was just through that really, just riding my bike and... It didn't put you off? Didn't put me off, no, and I'm still mates with him now. <laughs> what about you, In? Yeah, I also started racing BMX when I was seven, and I did like a race, at like a local racetrack, and every Saturday there was a race, and I started winning all these trophies, and then I was like the cool kid on the street because I had all these trophies, and I'd start racing the kids on the street and like putting up my trophies as trophies for the race on our street, so yeah, I was intrigued by winning prizes. Was there a particular moment when you kind of knew you could turn pro? Um, no, nah, I would have come later when I was maybe, I don't know, 18 or 19 years old when I started like making the national team selection and doing races in Europe. Cool. Well, that, that, all that leaves me to say is thank you very much to both of the guys for giving up some of their time uh, here at the Dubai Tour. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, it's free to do so and you can click on the globe for that and a couple more videos that you can watch now. Uh, the other day we asked the pros here what are the best and worst parts of being a pro cyclist and in the other corner down here, if you'd like to see a very intriguing suitcase at a Grand Tour, there's Adam Hansen's one which has got all sorts of shenanigans in it.